Hi, I'm Jim Binder. I'm a lifetime member of the Wisconsin Trappers Association, a Trappers Ed instructor, and I'm the state coordinator of the Wisconsin Cooperative Trappers Education Program. What I'd like to talk about today is population dynamics in relationship to responsible trapping. We're going to talk about a few definitions first. Population is the total number of animals. Um, it can be expressed as the total number of animals in a county or the state, but it's the total number of animals. The population density is the total number of animals in an area. So the density is expressed as, uh, we're going to use raccoons for example, 10 raccoons per square mile or 10 raccoons per 40 acres or something like that. The carrying capacity is the number of animals living in that area that have enough food, shelter, and space to live happy and healthy lives. Carrying capacity changes throughout the year depending on food availability and denning and nesting sites and, and things like that, competition for food. Harvestable surplus is the number of animals above the carrying capacity. So again, going with raccoons, if there's 10 raccoons on 40 acres, and that's the carrying capacity, but because of uh, the birth rate, uh, we've got 30 now coming into fall, the harvestable surplus is the number in excess of the carrying capacity would be 20 raccoons. Now, of course, the, the population density and, and the population itself is um, contingent upon the natality rate, which is the birth rate, um, and the mortality rate, which is the death rate. And both of those are affected by uh, space, food, cover, shelter, predation, disease, things like that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make a 40 acres. This is a fictional 40 acre area and we're going to go with 10 raccoons. That's probably not realistic but it makes it easy for the math. So we've got this 40 acres. There's 36 acres of corn, 4 acres of CRP. This little corner is low so there's a creek going through it and that creek has got clams and oh maybe a muskrat or two. Uh, there's some den trees, maybe some grapevine, ground nesting birds, tall grass all kinds of things, maybe a woodchuck burrow or two, all kinds of places where raccoons can live happy, healthy lives. And don't forget, we've got 36 acres of corn. So we're gonna start in the summertime. Now, the, the raccoons, there was 10 of them, that's five couples, have had kits. Let's just say four kits per, that's 20 kits plus the original 10, that's 30 raccoons. But we've said the carrying capacity is 10. That is throughout the year. Now, the reason being, in the fall, there's plenty of food. There's waste corn, there's, there's all kinds of stuff, grapevine and, and, and that kind of thing. So we've got 30, but then we get the ground to freeze and we get snow buildup. That waste corn isn't available anymore. The creek is frozen, the ground is frozen. There's very little for the raccoons to eat. Well, winter starts getting to be hard times. So the carrying capacity was 10, but yet we were at 30 raccoons. The harvestable surplus is 20 raccoons. They're gonna go one way or the other. They're going to disperse to other areas. They're gonna uh, get hit crossing the road. They're gonna get diseased. They're gonna get predated upon. They're gonna get trapped. Something is gonna happen where it's gonna correct itself and get back down to 10. Now, February comes along. Mommy and Daddy Raccoon have that special kind of raccoon hug. 60 to 65 days later, We've got babies again. So as you can see, it's sort of a cyclical curve, but as responsible trappers, we don't want to hurt the breeding population. We want to take just the harvestable surplus. I appreciate that you've given me the time to watch this, and as always, happy trapping.